So here we got Strike Term running for Swift Link. And a couple things I noticed is that if I look in the dial, the, uh, the, the dialer, I have it uh, um, at the uh, Anarchy Underground. And I've put the uh, name of the, uh, um, the, the address to the, to the BBS there. And what I found was, for whatever reason, this doesn't appear to be working. I could log on perfectly if I do an ATDT and then type it directly in. But I can't, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. The fact that, that uh, um, it asks for an IP address is a little disconcerting. That you would think that, uh, that it would, uh, since, since TCP sir can do name resolution, that you would be able to type that name there individually. And you may be able to do so. Um, for whatever reason, I haven't figured out. But if I look at Z, and I believe this came as default, you know, this one has uh, the resolve name there. So I'm not really sure what's going on. And the old fashioned way, ATDT AU BBS dot zap to dot org colon 23. You know, and that worked just fine, but the dialer will not work. So we're going to go Petsky right there. And it's going to connect using a Petsky translation. You know, we'll hit our delete and confirm what we are. Okay, I'm going to put in my uh, uh, information right quick. You know, like 30 years later, this is something that still chafes my ass. So we're on a BBS, we're, we're, we're at a command prompt, and, you know, universally, you type in a question mark, and it would let you know what the commands are if you didn't know them. Now, this is using uh, um, Commodore uh, encoding. It, it knows it's a Commodore 64. It knows that it's a uh, 40, 40 line, as opposed to, you know, some of the bigger 80 line stuff, more modern things, right? So when I hit the button, you know, oh, there's our upload menu. But you gotta look really quick because up oh, the menu's too big. And then the shit that was on the top, you can no longer see, you know, unless you have some sort of buffer built in. And the thing is, is that even after all these years, and this this bothered me back then, and somehow still bothers me now. You know, oh, oh, there's list files. Oh, this, what, what, oh, it's gone. So it's like, I realize it's only a 40 character display, but instead of sticking the menu in the middle, so the whole thing can't fit there or have this enormous amount of content to bring you to a command prompt that you could forego those six lines and somehow fit the whole thing on there. This is just pet peeves that have pissed me off and continue to piss me off about BBSs. I'm wondering after all these years why nobody could get this shit right. But um, I'm going to look at another movie because God forbid I type this in. It's going to list every single file in the current directory. And I would think that it would pause, you know, in between them. But you better look quick because it's going to keep loading them. And it's going to sit here for five minutes and load these files. And maybe when it got to the bottom of the screen, it would be like next or quit or, you know, redisplay. I don't imagine you need to redisplay, but maybe from the top or, or whatever. But no, we're just going to go through every stinking file in the directory. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this when it gets to the end and find out where Flappy Bird is and see if I could actually download it. Not that I really care about Flappy Bird, but this is sort of an exercise in, in using Punter uh, to download a PRG file and then, you know, store it on the drive. This is this is this this whole thing is an exercise in, in interfacing with the BBS with uh, TCP, sir, uh, which hasn't been the best of an experience so far. It's a shame to have a nice dialer system that you can't use because for whatever reason, the program that's designed to do it is not sending ATDT, whatever. This is what we're gonna do. 
We're going to download Flappy Bird and we're going to store it on that 1541 right there. I managed to capture what it was called. It's file number 367. I will not want to auto log off. It'll take just a second. And it will tell me to start downloading. It'll take more than a second. There we go. It's asking me to start. So I'm going to hit Control D, or Commodore D, right? Or we'll call it Flappy. Dot PRG. You'd think it would send the uh, the file name, but I guess not. So we hit Enter. You can see the drive kicking on. There it goes. There's the buffer. I think it's 255 characters at a time. The drive needs a little bit of oil. It's got a little squeak to it. I did calibrate it though. It works very nicely. So I'm going to pause this and we're going to wait till it finishes. We're still going. Uh, I imagine Punter has some sort of uh, cyclic redundancy checking. You can see that there are two retries. So I guess that there's a number that, that is added up by the total values of, of this uh, block that's going through. And if it doesn't add up, it must be no good. It sends a retry request for that block of data. And then it obliges and resends that block, and then it verifies it, and it continues on. So we've had two retries. <clears throat> I remember uh, back in the day where it was absolutely terrible. And what was worse than a bad block of data when something like uh, um, something Z modem was able to handle, you know, if, if the connection got disconnected, you lost the whole file. And sometimes that meant a couple of hours of downloading. And uh, Z modem was cool. It, it allowed you to continue where you left off. I think Y modem did that too. I'm just not sure. But I know you could stop in the middle and it would check all the blocks and see which one was missing and then continue off from there. But we're probably going to be here for a little bit. So I'm going to pause it again. So there we are. 199 blocks. I believe they were uh, 255 bytes apiece in six minutes and it is downloaded. So let me go <clears throat> and look at, um, I guess you could run a disk command uh, with the with the at symbol there. And we're gonna do a directory. And we're, we're on drive eight, so we can do a directory of drive eight. And we'll see all the stuff, this is my strike term disk I tried to make. Which is really confusing. You see, they got more on, on this program. They just got to have it on the BBS. Maybe the space bar. There we go. No shortage of files. And there it is. Right there at the bottom. Blabby.prg. I think the best way to handle this at this point is first we're going to we're going to go back and what we're going to do is go back into the terminal program and we're going to we're going to, we're going to quit out of there you know hang up properly at least if we know i think it's g leave the underground g yes fucking a i guess Okay, and we're off. So, I guess the best way at this point is just to shut her down. And let's do a, a load.
It looks like Flappy Bird's loading. It's like an old school method of downloading an app. I was concerned that it might run out of space on this disc because this disc was almost fully populated with these. It looked like it wasn't like a blank disc that I had stuck in there. <clears throat> so running at the blazing Commodore loading speeds of this drive, I expect Flappy Bird should be done within the hour. It probably shouldn't be that bad. You figure it took six minutes to download at 9600, yeah, it'll probably take a while. Hallelujah, finished. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Looks more like Doctor Who. <laughs> what are we looking at here? Are you serious? <laughs> Ended up downloading the wrong file? It I guess that was the wrong number. I force for generation. Maybe the correct joystick will help us in our Doctor Who quest. Okay. And he's walking, he's doing stuff. I think no, I think the whole point of this is I was able to, you know, log on to a BBS, uh, download software directly from the BBS onto the disk and then, you know, execute said software and see it, see it work. So, I got beat by one of those, those robots there. I should get back to my TARDIS and not worry about any of this stuff. But yeah, okay, we're going we're gonna to call today mission accomplished and maybe somebody can, can comment on some of the uh, issues that I've been having uh, with this. <clears throat> and, um, Try and see how we could uh, better improve this. You know, I don't know. Load up uh, I, I, on the, on this particular 1541 uh, uh, the, uh, drive here. This, you know, I have. I put this in the uh, root directory only because I was originally copying to disk. If you saw that that didn't work but I mean it seems like a good program you know strike term if if only I could work out that small issue I'd be able to, to you know maybe load in some different BBS uh, uh, names in the address book ultimately what I think is you know there should be a BBS that does not run buy a Commodore 64, but, you know, something more modern that could have, a, you know, hundreds of connections in and then have chat room and stuff like that. It shouldn't be written uh, with software that you dial up for maybe one or two nodes, you know, so, so you could get a, a community of people on a BBS at the same time, as opposed to, to trying to run it on an original bread bin or something off of 1541 drives and have it really slow. You know, that's just my thoughts, but I know there are people that are out there that are, you know, keeping the torch lit. You know, they do the best they can. I just get annoyed that some of the stuff that really pissed me off back then still pisses me off today. So, you know, I've also found for the time it takes, when you're ready to leave strike term, you better be sure because you have to go through all this stuff and load it back up again. And it's definitely not a quick loading program. I could use my, my cartridge, my um my, what's it called? My my Epics Epics fast load cartridge. The problem is I can't because the cartridge slot is using my my, my Swift link or my GG Labs. But just for anybody watching at home, you know this is this is what I'm running with, you know, SwiftLink 9600. I set the terminal ANSI 40 just by default because uh, a lot of times you dial in and they they set that up for you. But uh, I haven't figured out anything. I figured maybe in the advanced settings I would get something like uh, um, 
a haze command strain. So at least I could say, you know, for each one do ATDT or what have you. But when you go and, you know, and you choose your modem, you know, and, and, and you choose like SwiftLink as opposed to, you know, maybe some sort of uh, 232 device that's going to want some sort of haze command, you're not getting it, you know. So, so the, at least it appears to me that there's nothing further that could be done to uh, force it to send ATDT before it sends the name of, of the uh, URL or, you know, the resolved name of, of the BBS you're trying to connect to.